Cinema back, another edition. How we doing out there? Good, great, gray, yan, day, yan, day, yan, puke. Why the fuck am I here? I don't know. I don't know. I'm. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know anymore, gang. I mean, it's, I'm I'm happy that you guys are entertained. That's about the extent of my happiness. <laughs> so, <laughs> I I just. I have watched a lot of good movies lately. I just, I think if if you're getting older and wiser, you say less. And I'm starting to feel that I'm one of those people. <laughs> that I just, I don't know. Only talk when need be. <laughs> Only talk when need be. But then that would mean that the show's fucking kaputs, right? Uh Nevertheless, now that we're, I guess I'm going to continue doing video, I guess. Anyway, let's fucking stop playing around for once. Let's see if I can actually hold my focus and actually talk about the movie. You know, I'm always promoting and shit, but sometimes once this the, the fucking mouth gets going, I, I'm i just as surprised as you is where we end up. I listen to the uh, parts of, actually, I listen to the end of the uh, the Banshees of Inishirin review I did, I, I don't bother. Don't bother watching or li- watch the movie, 100%. Watch the movie, but you don't need to listen to me fucking babble on. Fuck, oh, it, was, it was awful. Awful. I just, I do better when I have somebody to talk to. That simple. Don't you? <laughs> Don't you? So this is going to come up in reverse, but the uh, f- the film that we're doing today, I guess this is where the visual element isn't half bad, unless it's going to, the reflection is going to be uh, reversed. Yep, sure, it certainly is. Creature from Black Lake is what we're doing today. Synapse release, uh, Synapse Films release of, damn, that's a lot of S's. Synapse Films release of Creature uh, from Black Lake, creature from Black Lake, starring Hamina, uh, Hamina, 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 Jack Elam, Dennis Fimple, House of a Thousand Corpses. If you guys are a fan of, talk about a fucking transformation. I know it was fucking forty years prior, but Jesus, I mean, the face is still there, but like, I think of the grandpa in House of a Thousand Corpses, and you know, seeing this actor, uh, Dennis Fimple, at a much younger age, I was just like, what? <laughs> Holy shit! Uh, yeah, we got uh, we got Joe Canton who plays Jack Elam. We got Pahu, Pahu, Pahu. Uh, this is this is what you guys want. This is this is what you guys fucking want <laughs> want to fucking listen to. Pahu played by Dennis Fimple. Grandpa Bridges played by Dub Taylor, probably the most believable, especially with his Louisiana accent that he's got going on throughout him. Even though, like, sometimes I feel like maybe, maybe he goes a little overboard, you know? I understand that the movie's called Creature from Black Lake, right? 
<laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I understand the I understand that the film is called Creature from Black Lake. However, sometimes you over exaggerate a character and you left giggling. Now I understand that this is a definitely a low budget horror film from nineteen seventy six where you could overact and nobody's really gonna notice, right? Sometimes though you watch a movie forty years later, you do notice. <laughs> Is that, I don't even think that's a Louisiana accent. That's just like a fucking, it's just an accent placement unknown. Uh, we got John David Carson, uh, John David Carson, who plays Reeves. What a fucking handsome man Reeves is. Um, we got, uh, Sheriff Billy Carter played, played by Bill Thurman. Sheriff Billy Carter, that's how he talked too. You know, you don't want to be. You don't want to be uh, getting all the, the town folk riled up. This is a pretty small town. Everybody know everybody. You know what I'm saying? You come in talking about a creature from the Black Lake, right? Bigfoot. You talking about Bigfoot to some of these limited thinking folk? Well, you're just going to start a riot now, aren't you, boy? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Uh, we got Orville Bridges played by Jim McCulloch Jr. who actually wrote the damn thing. It turns out that fucking Jim McCulloch, McCulloch Jr. is, is that how you say it? Uh, is a multi-talented man. He wrote this script, Jim McCulloch Jr., wrote this script, and there's even a sequence in here where he's playing the goddamn guitar. Is it a guitar or a banjo? Folks, let me know. Actually, Justin, my boy, if you guys ever need any music, you should uh, commission him to do some music for you. He goes on Instagram. He goes by Rue Badley, R O O B A D L E E. This is one of his. This is his favorite film of all time. Notice how he looks directly into the camera. This is his favorite film of all time. He told me nothing even compares. He said he's been watching this one ever since he was a young lad. He owns like five different copies of it: two on VHS, one Japanese international print. And he just loves this movie so much. Me? I hadn't even heard of the damn thing. Well, actually, uh, he jogged my memory. I I didn't know what it was until I saw who did the uh, cinematography, which was a good old Dean Cundy, who's literally done like 10 of my favorite films of all time. I'll, I'll mention those later in the game, but he... Uh, he was just like, I'm surprised you hadn't heard of it. Da, 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 da. And I think Joe Bob, uh, do you guys watch uh, The Last Drive-In with Joe Bob Briggs? If you don't and you're a horror fan, you fucking should. This, I, I You know, I promised myself I wasn't going to mention it, but I swear to God, AMC, if you cut Shudder, I'll cut you. I won't. How can you cut a corporate entity? Well, I suppose you could find the head of <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, but no, please don't fucking please don't cut shutter. Like every like, I promise you. I mean, what do you get? You you charge five ninety nine, six ninety nine for the service, and if let's just say a hundred and fifty thousand people buy that service, what are we talking about? One point two, one point three million. It's not as much money as you would think, I understand. But how much does it cost to get Darcy and Joe Bob and the crew in there when we're showing old films? We're not making new ones. We're showing old films. You just got to make a fucking shitty set because that's the appeal of it. I don't want it to be a fucking awesome set. I want it to be a shitty set. Um, But, God damn it, I heard about those layoffs this week and a couple of great fucking people that I saw on Twitter. Well, (laughs) fucking... We're in a weird place, dude. Like, even what I also read, HBO Max is taking off Westworld. And I was just like, what the fuck? Where are you going to see Westworld? How are you going to watch Westworld? I was a season and a half in. I kind of tapped out. But I, I always finish everything. It's just a matter of when. Um, You're not going to be able to watch Westworld because you can't pay residuals to people, you know, when you're an entity like HBO. You don't have that type of money. But, goddamn, talk about just stuff that ah it's been a it's it's been it, as it is in the entertainment industry it's always sometimes you know a bittersweet week or you know there's a week to week there's always fucking something where you're like oh shit <laughs> so 
Um. Anyway, creature from Black Lake, my 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 buddy's favorite movie ever. It's not, but he liked to have fun here. Uh, Orville Bridges, played by Jim McCulloch Jr. Uh, Fred, you know Fred, played by Roy Tatum. Eve, played by Catherine Hart. Now this is where the casting gets crazy. Becky Carter is played by Becky Smizer. Michelle, well that's played by Michelle Willingham. Willingham, or if we're in the UK, Willingham. Grand, uh, Grandma Bridges, played by em, uh, Evelyn Hendricks. Uh, for the record, uh, Becky Smizer. Um, HB, played by Roger Pancake. Pancake? Don't know. Orville's mother, blah, blah, blah. You, listen, the only other one that I'll mention on here is Professor Birch, who's in this. We see him early in the film. Played by our director, Joy N. Hauk. Joy N. Hauk Jr. Dad was actually, I think his dad owned a bunch of drive-ins in Louisiana and uh, actually financed this film, if memory serves. Creature from Black Lake. Um, I think that's right. Music by Jamie Mendoza Nava. Cinematography by the man himself, Dean Cundy. Big Trouble, Little Ch- Jesus. There's so the fog. Uh, literally, just Google Dean Cundy. He, I kid you not, he's done at least... I, I know no horseshit Wang. Uh ten movies that are amongst my favorites of all time. I tried to get Dean Cundy on here and Well didn't return my call, Dean. What's going on, man? It would have been a fun time. I ain't one of these fucking youngins that don't know your shit or know a bunch of half truths. I I'm I'm learned. I'm not. Why am I even lying on camera? I'm on camera. I'm, I'm saying that I'm smart. I'm not. Nope. In fact, it's probably best that you didn't uh, return my phone calls. My, I showed up at your doorstep, was knocking. That was me. So I don't know why you hid behind the island in your kitchen. But uh, I just wanted to talk to you, man. Just wanted to talk to you about one of your first films, Creature from Black Lake. Because actually, I think he uh, graduated, Dean Cundy, he graduated from UCLA in the late 60s or whatever. So this is one of his first features, if memory serves. I could be wrong. One of his first features in... I swear, you you look at this film, even in 76, you knew Dean was going to be something special, at least in, in my eyes. You know, there I'm sure there's probably debate, well, Roger Deakins, like, come on, that's like comparing, you know, someone to a, 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 a starting out composer to, to Hans Zimmer. What are you doing? What are you doing? Anyway, uh, written by Jim McCulloch, uh, just died this year. Uh, R.I.P. Jim, 2022. But weird IMDb credentials. He wrote seven things, directed one thing, and then was in the camera and electrical department for Brooklyn's Finest, which I think had Don Cheadle in it or something like that, and that came out in 2009. Just a weird, eclectic uh, uh, IMDb resume. Directed by J.N. Houck. Uh, directed a few things. Uh, he has directed a few things. He acted in a few things, wrote a few things, produced a few things. It's, you know, I what I did Banshees yesterday. Doesn't None of these guys quite had the credentials. It, this film kind of reminded me of... Where is it at? Where is it at? There it is, Ghost Riders. Wait a minute. Oh, it's actually on camera. That was not planned. But Ghost Riders, just a small cast in in just everything local, basically. This movie was, you know, you know how you shop local? Yeah, I mean, this Ghost Riders in this movie, local as fuck, man. And so I, I'm always fascinated by that because you see... There's some good performances in this, and in Ghost Riders, there's some good performances, and you're just like, "What the hell happened? Why, why didn't you, why didn't you stick with it?" But as we all know, the entertainment industry is about as lucrative as it fucking gets, is it not? Is it not? Let's talk about Justin's favorite movie. <laughs> I gotta stop saying that. Synapse film release of Creature from Black Lake. Uh, wouldn't you know it? It starts out in black, and you hear. The sounds of the swamp. Good sound design here, I must admit, in terms of setting an environment and setting a tone. Did it not? People who have seen it, did it not? Weren't you like, ooh, it did remind me of Swamp Thing a little bit because I'm trash. And, of course, oh, it's a swamp. It looks it's fucking, I am the worst, the GD worst. Anyway, great sound design here. Exteriors of the swamp, all done very well by Dean Cundy. In fact, there's a particular shot I like. There's a particular shot I like of a flower growing out of the swamp, yeah? Yeah? Well, the boat is going by frame as well, and I know that 
Cinematographers hate it when you notice shots, but I don't feel like that applies to me. I forget which cinematographer I told. I, it might have been... Uh, I had Michael Potter, who did uh, A Ghost Waits. He's a cinematographer. I had him on my show, and I was like, don't fucking tell me that I... that I, Maybe for the layman, they shouldn't notice your shot, but... If you're a cinephile, or at least a self-proclaimed one like I am, I, I want to notice that stuff. I want to go, oh, look at how beautiful that was. You know, like yesterday, uh, reminiscing on the Banshees of Inishir and Ben Davis's uh, cinematography. It, everything looks like a fucking painting. I want to feel that. Like, I want to go, hey, look, look. Like that Leo meme. You know, Leo meme. I wanted to go look at how fucking gorgeous that is, but apparently cinematographers get upset about that. Who else? I feel like I had somebody else on the show that was like, I didn't really want you to know. Oh, Powell, Powell Robinson from uh, uh, Threshold. I had Powell. Um, uh, well, actually, I had damn near the entire fucking crew on the show, but even he was just like, yeah, we just, you know, we don't... I don't think pretentious was the word that he used, but just like, hey, we don't we don't want it to take you out of the film, which is weird to me. Like, let's say that <clears throat> I don't know why I'm fucking talking about this, I guess, because Dean Cundy shot it. Um, but let's talk about this for a second. I don't see why that's a big deal if um, a shot. Well, I don't want it to take you out of the movie, but I do want even the layman audience member to go that looks really good i think that's okay that seems to be not okay um so we set up our environment of black lake and wouldn't you know it, we cut to the lab where a scientist or a professor as it were professor birch played by our i our, our director guess who guess what he's talking about bigfoot I, I, I'm so annoyed. Again, my friend Justin, there is a, uh, oh, I'm butchering it. I should have did some research beforehand, but I think there's like a, a dog man in Michigan close to where we, we live. There's a, there's a dog man sightings or, I mean, the, the dog man looks like Bigfoot to me, but he's all in on this. He's convinced he's going to find dog man. And I mean, I wish him well. I wish him, I hope he does, but. You're a goose of the silly variety, you know. But maybe that, you know, his fucking, his 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 need to explore and find the Bigfoot, well, we know where it stems from. Synapse film, Creature from Black Lake. It looks so great coming in backwards on the video. Jesus. A man talks about uh, Bigfoot. This is intercut with two men on a boat. One of the men on the boat is uneasy. What did we just see back there? I ain't never seen tracks like that before in my life. Never seen them. Ain't no animal did that. I think it's, uh, what's the fucking, we got Joe, who um, Jack Elam plays. What's his buddy's name? What's his buddy's name? Joe, Joe. Now, I mean, his buddy's name, two side mount. Dun, 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 dun. Um, how in the fuck? Maybe it was Rufus. Maybe it was Fred. Either way, as his buddy's talking about you know this is some some something's afoot here well they get hung up on something kind of like tremors you're hung up i tell you Keep, you're gonna blow the clutch but their boat gets hung up on something and as they're trying to get it free hey <laughs> hell joe's friend overboard never to be seen or heard from again yes dead as fuck and then we fast forward in time do you think anybody believed joe hmm I don't think so. <laughs> I think when he went back, when he went back to the town and was like, "There's a crazy Bigfoot," and they were like, "No, you're a drinker. You're a drinker, Joe. That's unfortunate." Um, but of course, Joe gets away from the creature. Which uh, how I don't know if the creature is submerged, you know, and pulls a whole man in the water, and you got some fucking cheap ass tin boat. You could have just fucking you could have had seconds bigfoot you just tip that goddamn boat over and you eat jack elam jack elam's face is so good i only remember him from once upon a time in the west but he's i mean he's been in so many john wayne films but like i distinctly remember 
Elam's face in Once Upon a Time in the West. If you're a Western fan and you haven't seen Once Upon a Time, wow, that just doesn't saying that out loud just doesn't make sense. If you're a Western fan and haven't seen Once Upon a Time in the West, I would argue, are you a Western fan? But on the off chance you're not a Western fan, but you want to see a good movie and you want to see, you know, kind of some influences uh, that Tarantino pulls from Once Upon a Time in the West. Have fun. It's a good one. Um, the men think they hear something, blah, 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 blah. Uh, road trip. Two students are actually uh, talking to the professor after he wraps his lecture about uh, Bigfoot, and two men are like, hey, we're going to go hunting. You want to come? The professor's like, no, you fuck. This doesn't, it's not real, but it's fun to ponder. <laughs> um, uh, and they go, wouldn't you know it? And it's uh, Pahu and Reeves. That is his name throughout the entire film, Pahu. It's not like we even hear, like, oh, his name's Jeff with a G later in the film. No, it's just Pahu throughout the film. But guess what? They're going searching, going searching. Um, they set up a campsite. Good camera work here by Cundy as Shocker. Side note, the two men are talking fireside, and one of them says he wishes he had a burger to go with his beer. The other dude says, what is it with, oh, I know why I write this down. He says, what is it with you and Boigas? Why do you like burgers so much? And uh, Pahu, who was raised on a chicken farm, so they had nothing but chicken. He goes into, and this is before, this is 18 years before this movie was released. He goes into a, a, a Bubba Gump. <laughs> She's like, I've had sautéed chicken, I've had broiled chicken, I have fried chicken, I have had chicken dumplings, and he just goes on and on, and I was like, ah, that reminds me of Bubba going, listing every type of shrimp he's had, and I was like, oh, well, this was 18 years before that, so technically, Bubba Gump, or Bubba, got it from Creature from Black Lake. I'm probably the only one that thought that as... They were watching it. I in talking to people recently, I've I've realized that uh, <laughs> I, um, I it, it, talking to filmmakers specifically, and I don't even know why I didn't catch it like much earlier as I was doing reviews. But there's been this running theme where like uh, writers, directors, actors, actors, actresses, they're like you, your attention to detail on some of the this this the weirdest things. It's crazy, Sean. It's like. I don't know if that should make me feel good or bad. I mean, I like the idea that I have attention to detail, but if I'm just noticing dumb shit like fucking Pahu talking about broiled chicken, Louisiana chicken, you know, like what am I, am I getting the full impact of the movie? If this is the dumb shit that I'm noticing, well, who knows? Who knows? I just work here. Um, what else we got here? Uh, humana, 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 humana. I hate doing video because I, you see all me like working here. This is why if I am going to do a video, I need a goddamn producer and guess who's not going to pay for a producer. You guessed it, me. So the two, the two find, uh, find themselves in the town where the legend of Bigfoot exists. Yes. The same town that Joe's in Joe and lost his buddy Rufus or Ted or Fred or, Right said Fred, um, drop dead Fred. They they go investigating the general population. This is where we meet Sheriff Billy Carter. I did all that impression earlier. Guess I could have saved it, but I didn't. Now did I? I didn't. I didn't. I didn't save it. Now did I, folks? Nope. Already went into it. But I tell you what, he is also one of the most believable characters because of just that accent. I find it to be a very subtle accent, very subtle accent. And those are the easier ones to believe as opposed to Grandpa, which, by the way, I just want you to know, in IMDP, they sell they, they spell Grandpa, G-R-A-N-D-P-A-W. So I don't, again, noticing shit that just doesn't matter. I can't help it. But, uh. Uh, I believe it's Reeves that finds himself into the barber shop, and he's questioning the local town folk. He's like, hey, you ever seen Bigfoot? Actually, Reeves isn't super country. I don't know why I did that. But as he's asking the barber, like, hey, you know where we would find any of the locals that might be willing to talk about this? Well, Sheriff Billy Carter's one of the ones in the barber seat, and he takes a fancy. And uh, as I already ruined at the top of the show, he's just like, look, dude, you can't, Reeves, buddy, pal, you can't be going around. I love how they call them Yankees. That's how, the, like, it's so fucking, it's so 70s and so just white America. But anyway, um, Sheriff Billy Carter says, we don't need no Yankees coming in here and, and creating a fuss amongst the locals. But some of the local women, they're having it. That's for sure. 
I don't know why I just randomly put that in there. But um, so you got Reeves at the barber shop trying to get the low down. You got Pahu going to a diner, and it just he strikes up a conversation with an obnoxious waitress. And I only say obnoxious waitress. I don't know if she was written that way or if that if they just said, "Oh no, that's perfect for that role." But I was just like, "You are super over the top, even more so than Grand Paul." Uh, is over the top but anyway Pahu asked her about the fucking creature and the waitress of course announces it to the whole diner oh you Yankees are looking for the creature and everybody fucking stops and is like what the fuck um, <laughs> one of the patrons actually goes on to say how he saw the creature once <laughs> <Jesus Christ. laughs> he saw the creature I just saw my face I, I, you know what I gotta do is I I can't I can't do the if I am gonna do video I can't do the shit while it's fucking... I can't see myself as I'm doing it. This is no good. Because every time I kind of glance down and I just see this fat idiot with dumb hair, I I literally want to throw the mic across the room. Anyway, one of the patrons is like, oh yeah, I've seen the creature once. Always at night, always rustling around. Just haired, hair everywhere. Just, just It would scare God if God saw it. And that's my wife. <laughs> I mean, that is what he does say. Uh, you talking about my wife, the creature? <laughs> and, uh, well, you know, the whole diner has a laugh, except Joe, who's in the diner, fucking grabs a man by a collar. You think this is fucking funny? You think well, you want to go? You want to go see if my friend who's torn apart is fucking funny? There's, ask him if it's fucking funny to be attacked by Bigfoot. Probably not. And uh, it actually, uh, good acting here by Jack Elam, but also um, kind of drives the point home that Jack isn't someone to be fucked with. Like they, they, or at the very least, the townsfolk believe that he believes that he saw Bigfoot, um, which which was nice. Like he wasn't, you know, like they all fucking clam up once Joe grabs the dude um, by the collar. And is like this. This wasn't a laughing matter when I was going through it, Bucko. <laughs> um, uh, what else we got here? Um, Orville. Yeah, they pick up. So one of the patrons in the barber shops, like, hey, I'll tell you a little bit more about that Bigfoot. Never mind the sheriff. He just don't know. He just don't know, man. Um, tells him that he can tell him a little bit more about the creature because the creature actually attacked his family, and. Uh, I'm not gonna go too much more into the movie. You got to see it and fucking pick up Synapse Films' um, release of it. Uh, but what I will say, in closing, um, that I thought was kind of funny is that uh, young Orville and uh, his mom and dad and grandpa, who we meet later and everything, they see the creature. They stop. Um, I believe they had car trouble. Maybe it was a flat tire or something. Um, but nevertheless. Um, a young baby Orville goes wandering in the woods, and his mom goes to find um, him. Uh, they all see Bigfoot. Um, but I kind of chuckled, and I shouldn't. It's not a funny scene. Um, but I kind of chuckled as they all evade Bigfoot. They all get in the car and drive away. Um, it's a uh, gravel road, so they spin out and get into a car accident, and everybody dies except Orville and the grandparents, so mom and dad and maybe sister, I don't know, mom and dad for sure are gone, <laughs> dead, and I was just like, ah, oh boy, ain't that a fucking, ain't that a pip, <laughs> you fucking, you try to get away from Bigfoot, and then you get in a car accident, Jesus, you, you, you didn't, I know it's tough to plan when you're panicking, but, you know, you're on a gravel road, you're on a gravel road, safety first, guys, we're trying to get away from the Bigfoot, yeah, well, the Bigfoot's not going to... Uh, tip over your car. Oh, wait, he does later in the film. He does tip over a car, doesn't he? Oh, spoiler. Anyway. Uh, I, <laughs> listen, it's a creature feature. It's a creature feature, and everybody does a good job in this. Oh, you just sound cliche and that you're stalling. I'm not stalling. I don't know what else to say about a low-budget creature film from 1970s. I know what I can say that sounds mildly... Um, uplift. I, I like this movie, by the way. If any of you thought that I didn't, I liked his good popcorn flick. I don't like it as much as my friend Justin does. Now, at this point, I'm just giving you a hard time. Relax, buddy. Don't fucking text me and be like, hey, I, it's, I like it, but it's not just... Have you ever heard of entertainment? That's entertainment. 
So I, I, I'd say I think the biggest thing that works in this film, similar to Jaws. What do you mean, Sean? Cheat the creature. Cheat the creature. You don't need to show him all the time. And when we did show him Planet of the Apes, Justin, you want to agree on that? Nobody knows what we're talking about. Old school Planet of the Apes? How do you feel about that comparison? DM me. Te- no, don't DM me. Text me, you fuck. <laughs> anyway, I, I, I think that's what works about the film. We cheat the creature so much that I am on edge. Now the ending itself is a little underwhelming. It, if you're not going to deliver a sequel. But, you know, as I was talking about that I've mentioned in um, podcasts past, um, I don't always need a definitive ending. In fact, if I had my druthers, 60% of the time, let's have a traditional ending. 40% of the time, let's make us think and wonder. Um, but the reason why I bring up Jaws is if you guys know any stories about Jaws, uh, Bruce the shark, a lot of uh, technical problems, um, getting the shark to work and stuff. So what they had to do is basically shoot less of the shark and cheat as much as they could. And through the power of movie magic and editing, well, you have yourself one of the greatest films of all time in Jaws, in my opinion. Um, effective here in Creature from Black Lake, though, in execute like... In all the scenes <clears throat> where the creature is present, I think it's really, really well done. I, I think the only thing that I had an issue with, and actually I wanted to pick Dean Cundy's brain, Justin, you'll know what I'm talking about, is when the fucking Bigfoot pushes the car or pushes the van into the windshield and Reeves hits him, like smashes his face on the windshield. That was the the only clear scene that this was very low budget filmmaking outside of that it's a very big film and i know when they released the uh poster for this i think you know the 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 poster can hook you in but i i think what the combination of the poster and the exteriors of the swamp for this make it a much larger scale film um than than it actually is which is totally fine i love that you know um but yeah, it's it's going to be impossible for me to hate a movie that, to me, uses some of the best parts of Jaws to implement it in, in making their own film, and um, I think they did that here. So, you can get this right now, Synapse Films, um, for all you people that are still doing physical media like myself. Um, it's available now. I think it came out a couple weeks ago. Uh, see it or stream it before purchasing it but the bonus features on this are great um, anytime you get to hear Dean Cundy Dean Cundy talk about his career is a goddamn good disc if you ask me Ellis Cinema Creature from the Black Lake you can get it now so many shows around the corner so make sure you stay tuned if you're into this horrible show. Ellis Cinema, Creature from Black Lake, and are we gone? <laughs>